Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, landlords and tenants breaking rent rules. Fijian wildfire survivors share experiences. And silver to get more tsunami sirens. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Smith. The Fiji Competition and Consumer Commission says there have been more than 3,000 cases of contract breach by landlords since 2010. And one area highlighted is landlords and tenants colluding to put up the rent. Details with Felipe Nakaso. Despite the rent freeze in place, reports of landlords increasing rents is still a major concern. We've received uh, tenancy complaints and what we find is people can be living in a particular property for the last five years. They know a rent freeze is in place, but they mutually agree to have the rent increased. This has been one of the main complaints received by the Competition and Consumer Commission. However, tenants only bring up the issue after they have moved out of the residence they were renting. 283 cases of illegal rent increases have been filed with the Commission since 2010. Uh, multiple cases where the, both the landlord and tenants they agree to have a receipt so again, an example would be the landlord says uh, property price uh, rental price is 700 but i'll give you a receipt for 500 tenant says 500 when my inspectors go out to inspect tenant says it's 500 landlord says it's 500 the receipt shows it's 500 Two months later, the person comes in and complains and saying, I've been paying $700 all along. The rent freeze order will be eased out as soon as the commission completes its three public consultations around the divisions. So this is a very important move as well for us. Uh, we will also look into educating the agents in as far as uh, you know, rent freeze is concerned, what needs to go into those uh, tenancy agreements that they have between uh, the clients. It is expected changes to the Landlord and Tenant Act will be made next year. Philippa Nicasso, FBC News. The massive wildfires sweeping through California have killed 23 people. Former Fiji resident Julia Matiavi, who now resides in Santa Rosa, California, says that they have never seen a scene like this before. Anna Ravulo tells us more. Everyone was just panicking. I have literally have no words to explain how I felt that night because I never expect to be a fire where we live. Because it was such a, it's such a small town, you'd never expect it. From now, I think the plan is just to help rebuild whatever was lost. I know a couple of people who lost their homes, a couple of friends and family that lost their homes. We're just hoping for the best. We do whatever we can, donate whatever we have. We're just here to help each other. As such a small community as Island is, we are going to come together and just help those who are in need. Meanwhile, U.S. Ambassador to Fiji, Judith Sifkin, says... Of course, some hopefully will have had taken out a private insurance that will cover damages and um, I think through various relief organizations such as the American Red Cross uh, that they are providing first of all immediate assistance, you know, shelter, clothing, food for those that need it and that there may be some possibility through disaster facilities to get further assistance. Sefkin has not yet received any reports of a classroom building at the entrance of Lalin Memorial School in the Vui Levu Nausori was destroyed in a fire this afternoon. Videos posted on social media show thick black smoke and flames fully engulfing the building. It's not yet been ascertained what caused the fire, however investigations has begun into the incident. FBC News is trying to get more details. It's understood the burnt building was the Form 3 classroom block. The National Fire Authority is investigating the incident. Tsunami sirens were tested in Suva and Lamy today to ascertain their coverage area as the Ministry of National Disaster works to install an additional five sirens in the capital's high-risk areas. Ministry of Disaster Management Permanent Secretary Meleti Mbani Marama says a national drill will be scheduled later this year once the new sirens are fully operational. Maggie Boyle reports. 
sounding the siren, not to alarm anyone, but only to demonstrate its reach. And test for the two existing signals that we have. That is basically just to test the coverage of how far the signals can travel in terms of the coverage of the two sirens. Emergency services in the country are also putting in measures to be tsunami ready as the cyclone season approaches. We are currently going to procure an additional five sirens which will be installed within the greater Suba city area. Once that has been installed and tested and the awareness has been completed, then we will conduct the national drill. The Ministry's Permanent Secretary, Meleti Mbani Marama, says they expect to hold a national drill by year-end. It's set for November, but uh, when the program is complete, then I'll be able to talk more on that. The five new tsunami sirens will be gifted to Fiji by the New Zealand government at a cost of $300,000. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Still to come, alleged wife killer threatens journalists and fireworks sales closely monitored. Stay with us. The trial of a 57-year-old taxi driver charged with the murder of his wife in Bar three years ago started in the Suva High Court this morning. The accused, Mohammed Yassin, faces one count of murder and became furious when journalists present tried to take his video for news purposes. Shireen Shivan reports. Mohammed Yassin is alleged to have murdered his wife, Mamun Nisha, in Wailelimba in 2014. A neighbor, Manasaratu, testifying for the prosecution, said he saw Yasin running away from the scene of the incident on the day of the offense. Ratu told the court that on November 16, 2014, he was having his smoke break when he heard someone yelling from the neighborhood and soon after that, he saw Yasin running away. He testified he quickly ran to the scene only to find Maimun Nisha lying in a pool of blood. Ratu said he tried to revive Nisha when he saw stab wounds on the left side of the deceased snake. The witness alleged Yasin returned to the scene and tried to stab the woman again when he was pulled away and the knife taken from him. Outside the courtroom, Yasin charged violently at television journalists while being escorted to the cell block. <laughs> And while in the cell block, Yasin was continuously yelling at the journalists, threatening us, and also said that journalists should not underestimate him. His trial continues tomorrow. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. The Mineral Resources Department is closely monitoring the purchase, possession and use of fireworks. Mineral Resources Director Dr. Rachel Tanga says this is to ensure the safety of the public during this festive season. Sainian Mboila reports. The Mineral Resources Department is currently inspecting retailers to ensure only permitted fireworks are for sale. It's been two weeks now. They've been going out and doing the inspections. And that's when uh, they come uh, and uh, consult with uh, the retailers and even the wholesalers. So the wholesalers is when they import, when they go out and clear the container from uh, the port. That's when they, when they consult with them eh, and uh, the requirements that they need to meet. Tanga want retailers to avoid selling fireworks if they don't have a license. To be a licensed retailer and uh, there are some requirements like signages and uh, posters and displays uh, that uh, is required for the retailer to, to have, eh? to put out on display when uh, selling uh, these fireworks. The brand is good and uh, we want the old crackers to come, uh, come and we want to use all crackers. It should, it should be used on the particular day on yeah, Diwali only. The government is, is putting the pepper on which is good. Retailers are being urged to display their license to sell and permits to possess explosives when selling fireworks. Setting of fireworks is permitted from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. daily and from 5 p.m. to midnight on Diwali. 
Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. The Fiji Bus Operators Association says bus drivers who have any issues should raise it with their respective managements so that it can be solved. Amid reports that many bus industry workers are now registering with the Transport Workers Union, Association General Secretary Rohit Lachin says he doesn't understand where this union has suddenly come from. Lachin says drivers had not raised any complaints regarding their working conditions in the past and he does not understand why this issue is being highlighted now. Lachin, who operates KR Luchin buses says he has a very good relationship with his drivers. Meanwhile, Union General Secretary Kamlesh Kumar says over 200 workers have registered with the union and the number continues to increase. The union claims the drivers have been receiving very low wages and work under poor conditions. Only 12% of Fiji's population has any form of insurance. Insurance brokers of Fiji believe the public needs a broad, firm understanding of what insurance is all about and how people could benefit from it. Savaratambo reports. Parliamentary Committee members on Economic Affairs this morning were advised by insurance brokers that having the risk covered is important. Insurance Holdings Country Manager Jason Hill says better understanding of what insurance is all about will encourage people to become insured. Only by a number of stakeholders, whether that be government, the regulator, the insurers, the brokers, by pooling together and working together um, and, 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 and making it a large education piece and helping the public understand, are we ever going to be able to increase that 12% to something that it really needs to be, which is an awful lot more. Some of, some of the stuff that is so uh, quite uh, you know, strong, I, mean, I think people, re, um, you know, res you know, it resonated with people. Huh? But then you're right, I mean, it, then it just fell by the wayside. Uh, so perhaps this committee can say that, you know, whatever you started in 2016, continue with it. Marsh Limited branch manager Wayne Wong highlighted some of the challenges brokers face. We talked about the cyclone, cyclone insurance drying up in, in the 80, you know, late 80s. Um, that was a huge challenge in, historically. Um, the other challenge that we have is, is the non-admittance of, uh, uh, of rules by the Reserve Bank under the Insurance Act of Fiji. Other issues that were part of discussion is the need for improvements in the insurance industry and the insurance covers are currently in place. Sabi Ratambua, FBC News. Seven people will be walking around New Zealand's North and South Islands to raise money for children from disadvantaged families in Fiji. One of the participants, Savneel Sangeet, says the walk is also to raise awareness. Sangeet says they will also hold fundraising seminars and programs during the walk. He is inviting business houses and others to contribute to the walk. The walk is scheduled for next year and is expected to take 90 days. The walk is to again raise funds for uh, provide educational needs and related needs of children coming from uh, financially disadvantaged families in Fiji and also to raise a international level of awareness against child abuse and child neglect. Ahead in sports with Jamie, he has all the latest from the announcement by FRU on its new deal but up next is Rachel with business. Thanks Jackie, good evening and coming up in business tonight. ANZ Bank to provide correct disclosures. And in growing Fiji, Tamavua Princess Road undergoes major repair works. Stay with us. I'm Anare Sarvakuroa of Nayabu Wendebuka Telebu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM. Only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM. Only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Welcome back. Leading business tonight, the Consumer Council is calling on the ANZ Bank to provide correct disclosures on changes being made to their lending, credit card and banking services, fees and charges. The call comes in light of the public notice last month stipulating the changes will come into effect tomorrow. The Consumer Council contends the published information was incomplete and contained misleading facts that is likely to create confusion and mis 
understanding about the ANZ loan packages and services. They call in the ANZ to reissue the notice, clarifying the new fees and charges and provide full disclosure to consumers. And we now join Savanada from HFC Bank with the latest from the trading world. Gunaka. Let's look at our economic activity today. Australia saw its currency strengthen against the Fijian dollar throughout the day as they released positive data. The Consumer Inflation Expectation Index increased from 3.8% to 4.3%. Australian home loans for August were above the consensus rising to 1% when expected to be at 0.5%. The Aussie dollar strengthened 19 points from morning. Tomorrow morning, we have some U.S. releases. They have their initial jobless claims expected to reduce from 260,000 to 251,000. And their continuous jobless claims also expected to reduce from 1.938 million to 1.935 million. If those forecasts are correct, we should see a stronger U.S. dollar tomorrow. That is the global economic news for now. Finaka. Thanks, Avanada. Looking at today's exchange rates and foreign currencies in the Fijian dollar. The Fijian dollar strengthened against the Chinese yuan and the American dollar to close at 3.15 and 47 cents respectively. The Australian dollar closed at 61 cents. The New Zealand dollar and PNG Kina weakened to close at 67 cents and 1.34. As for the commodities market, a mixed day with oil prices closing at 51.6 a barrel. Gold closed at 1,292 per ounce and silver closed at 17. 19 an ounce. And in Growing Fiji tonight, the Fiji Roads Authority is carrying out major pavement repair works at Princess Road from Lakamba Street past Carlsa Road Junction as part of its accelerated structural repair program. General Manager Networks Management and Maintenance Aram Go says these sections of roads have badly failed pavement which require extensive full width repairs as a method of treatment. Go says over the coming years, major works planned on the arterial network through the Suvanasori corridor will affect traffic congestion. The FRA aims to ensure the alternative access via Princess Road is therefore in better condition to accommodate the anticipated increase in vehicle use. Once completed, before December, the improved roads will provide a smoother and safer journey to motorists with more visible signage and road markings. And that was business this evening. Now to the latest in sports. Here's Jamie. Thanks, Rachel, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, Sprint King wants more time to adapt. And Suba through to last four at IDC. This and more are coming up. I am a member of the Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, I am Sandhya Naira Refugee. My friends are listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Former Pacific Sprint King Banuve Tamakal still needs more time to adjust to the game pattern of the National Sevens team. Tamakal Dhoro is among the 23-member squad camping at the Uprising Beach Resort, preparing for the upcoming Sevens tournaments. Meli Tavanga caught up with him and files this report. Mbanove Tamakal Dhoro may have impressed coach Gareth Beba at the October 1st Sevens tournament last month, but when asked if he had what it takes to make the final squad, Mbao Bullet was nothing but honest. Not really, not at the moment. Eh? Uh, I've seen some other boys that have been uh, uh, participating very well in training. Eh? And uh, probably midway through next season, or if, even if the coaches see me fit, that I'm ready. But to be honest, I'm not, I'm not ready just yet. Eh? The 33 year old says he aims to become one of the best wings in the national squad. However, that will require sheer determination and hard work. I think I'll stick with the squad uh, from now until 2020, whatever the coaches have been, uh, planned for me. 
but I'll just be patient at the moment and just keep working and that's something I'm very good at just uh, uh, just to persevere and you know, just keep pushing it in every session that I have here at Uprising. Coach Gareth Babel commended Tambakul Thoro and says the young athletic star has improved since joining the national squad. He's progressed. He's progressed. He's uh, a lot more confident in contact areas than, uh, than I initially thought. Um, he reads the game better than I initially thought. I think that it's the subtle decision-making things that uh, that Benuve is going to have to, to, to get to grips with under pressure. But equally, give him the ball with 15 metres of space and you saw what he did against an Australian winger. The 23-member squad who are currently in camp will try their utmost best to impress Coach Beba to be in the final squad for the Oceania Sevens and also the 2017-2018 HSBC World Seven Series. Meli Tavanga, FPC Sports. Fiji Airways is now the official sponsor of our national rugby teams, including our men's and women's sevens teams, the Fijian Drua, Flying Fijians and the Fijiana 15s. The five-year sponsorship deal was announced in Suva last night. Meli Tavanga reports. Unveiling the new set of uniforms for our national ruggers, Prime Minister Vorenge Mbanimarama says every official and national players will now fly like a Fijian on the field and in the air. I want to congratulate the boards and management of both the FRU and Fiji Airways in striking this historic partnership. It is a great day as our national rugby teams now stand hand in hand with our national airline carrier. Fiji Airways Chief Executive Andre Filion says this is another milestone achievement. Rugby shares our pride and our ideal and just like us they punch well above their weight in taking on the world. The partnership now creates a new era for the FRU and our national airline. The rugby family in Fiji, from the aggressive level to our national teams, including all volunteers, administrators, in clubs, provincial unions, schools, the board of directors, members of the FRU council, and all FRU staff will board on that special Fiji Airways Flight 679 in our journey to a new rugby horizon. As part of the partnership, local referees will also be sponsored by the domestic airline Fiji Link. Melitabanga, FBC Sports. The Australian National Rugby Championship has set a, so a solid pathway for local rugby players going into the flying Fijians. While the national squad is yet to be officially announced, Fijian row coach Sinirusi Serwakula already confirms that some of these players will join the flying Fijians to prepare for next month's Europe tour. Eroni Tuinuku reports. The Fiji Airways draw side will miss some of its key players for the Flying Fijians November tour. It will be named uh, sometime uh, this week uh, and, and uh, some of the uh, draws will be named and uh, I think uh, uh, next week will be their last game because they're flying out the following week. This will affect the team's preparation as they ranked second in the NRC standing. But it's disappointing. But we just have to move on and that's uh, one of uh, that's one of my job is to coach these guys to go up to uh, test match Rua captain john stewart is keeping his head high knowing his boys will give queensland a good run next week to be honest uh, they have a game in hand this week by the time we play them next week they'll be on top if they win the game this week so we can we cannot underestimate uh, them uh, as their favorites for winning the tournament this year. The naming of the Flying Fijians team for the November tour will take place this week. However, Fiji Airways and Road team will play against third place Queensland Country next Saturday at Low Talkers Churchill Park. Eroni Twinoku, FBC Sports. The Sub Sabu football side has qualified for the semi final of the senior grade at the Courts Inter District Championships. However, the path for the last four was not easy for the team from the Hidden Paradise who had to endure a loss and wait for other results to go their way. Meli Tavanga has more. The Sabu Sabu Brigade went down 1 0 to Nandrunga, a result that could have seen the side bow out of the tournament. However, Rakiraki's 2 1 win over Lami meant Sabu Sabu will now accompany Nandrunga from the pool to the last four. It's been uh, tough and we're looking forward, forward for the game. Eh? The players know the task will not only get tougher in the sudden death stage. It will be a big change in the game. We have now adapted to the weather and we can do something. 
In the semi-final, Nandronga meets Tailevu Naita Siri and Navua takes on Savzavu. Both matches will be played on Saturday. Melitawanga, FBC Sports. The silver football side has qualified for the semi-final of the IDC after beating Tavua three goals to one this afternoon. The result also means Tavua is now eliminated. Here are the goals from that match. The outside is Ravin Eskaran, the flag steader. He is onside and Ravin Eskaran has opened the account. Tavua come in to attack Sivo and Sivo's kick a good one it is too. And across Tavua have equalized. A great cross from Sivo from that far touch line side. Turns away beautifully, then looks at his timing up there in field to Ivan. Ivan to Shahil. Shahil now turns and Shahil Dave has scored for the super side. Again, Shahil Dave makes another break there. He's seen him off the line, then he floats it again and into the net it goes. Shahil Dave gets his second goal. Another neat goal by Shahil. Yeah, we'll go back to our camp and we'll give the chance to our coach to decide and he will plan. Uh, as uh, what we're gonna do for the semis, and uh, we we know that uh, it won't be easy, that easy. District coaches are under close watch at the IDC, which is underway at Churchill Park in Lautoka. Apart from selecting players, the Fiji football technical team has been assessing coaches around the country pre-tournament and at the event. Fiji team head coach Christoph Gamel says he will be keeping close tabs on mentors as they hold the key to the performance of players. To be honest, uh, I think that the travail, the, the work that we have done now with my staff, uh, with Yogendra, with uh, Ravinesh Kumar, uh, I have launched a process to monitor the coaches all, uh, all around uh, Fiji now, because it's, it's an important project. We need to settle the, the, a good type of play, because I, I got too many problems when I play with national team and the players, they go back to the senior team or the, the Premier League and we get problem because they go in bad habits and I have to restart the process. So now I have work on the consequences, I will work on the course. In today's play of the day, rugby league superstar Jason Taumalolo has made news again, this time for missing his team's flight to Tonga. Conspiracy theorists might have thought that he wanted to switch allegiance again, but no, the real reason he missed his flight was revealed by Tonga coach Christian Wolf, who found some humour in an otherwise minor setback. Yeah, it was a funny one. Uh, we all got on the plane, or not actually on it, but we all got through and uh, got ticketed and everything else, and, and then they decided there was uh, too much weight on the plane, and they had to offload a couple of guys, and unfortunately one of those was Jason. So, um, he's big enough, he's probably the biggest boy, so it makes sense. I guess so, yeah, uh, him and Saliva, but uh, obviously would have liked them two to be on the plane as well. Yeah. That's it from Sports. Angie joins you later on with weather and in new media. A look at some apps that can help with homework. The operative word, of course, being help. Catch that after the break. Exams back in session, which means more homeworks too. But don't fret about those tests. There are plenty of apps to help make prepping easier. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. The weather is sure getting good, clear sunny spells with all hours today. Let's just assume the sun was out modeling its rays to us. Looking at the west, the sun peers through high clouds. The mountain scenes in some areas are just breathtaking. Eastwards from Pek Haber to Suva, a lovely day as well with few afternoon showers. And up north, partly cloudy with few showers indicated for tonight. 
At sea, Southeast winds 20 to 25 knots with rough seas. And for the tides, high tide early tomorrow morning will be at 12.41 with a low tide at 6.53. See the beauty of sunrise at 5.39. For tomorrow, it's Friday and a beautiful day is in the forecast with only 20% chances of rain. So basically, we can expect a much clearer day. Tomorrow's temps, Suva and Savu Savu will be the coolest with highs of 27 degrees. And looking further on to Saturday, after much sunshine, we're looking at some rain. But rain might think of diverting its route. Well, fingers crossed on that. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that. Angie, on Fiji and Pulse today, we asked, are you preparing for the cyclo season? Compared to what happened last year with cyclo season, I think we'll be more prepared this year. Public were caught off guard last time when Winston came in. Uh, the route they didn't expect it was most uh, affected and then the last minute it did change its route so therefore for general public i am sure that uh, not if all the publics would be highly alert Since you know that uh, cyclone winston came last year it really cost uh, our government lots of uh, money in regards to preparation and disaster management so this year, like uh, they've been predicted that uh, there's four to six cyclones in the Pacific region, specifically our beloved Fiji. So I'd advise the public to always uh, ensure that uh, you have a shelter in your home, move to higher ground if you're in lower, uh, lower land. As the day goes by, we are preparing our house, preparing all the parts of our house, that's the roof, the walls. And uh, because it's a hurricane season coming, so uh, the loo is to be done. Recapping the main stories, landlords and tenants breaking rent rules, Fijian wildfire survivors share experiences, and Suva to get more tsunami sirens. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, can the Fijian Bati win the Rugby League World Cup? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day. This picture was sent in by Miss Vendovi, a sunset shot that was taken on the island of Rukua in Benga. I'd like to encourage all our viewers to send in more pictures of our beautiful Fiji, whether it's our tropical flowers, stunning waterfalls, maybe a visiting cruise ship, or even your favorite pit. Email them through to fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Na radio Fiji 1 and Radio Fiji 1 and